welcome worship room. God is so awesome and he's worthy, absolutely worthy to be praised. Welcome, welcome if you're on our Facebook, welcome on our YouTube, welcome on our web portal, amen. I know you could have been any place else on this morning, but you are in the room. So thank you, thank you, and like, share, and invite. Bring somebody else in the room, amen, because there is a prayer for you on today. There is a word for you today. There is a song, oh, that will catapult your life to your next level on today. God is good. <laughs> oh, my God. He is so wonderful and awesome. I cannot just fathom the, the, the greatness of the Lord. Amen. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you and we praise you for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do even now. God, I thank you even now, God. God, with a grateful heart that I was able to get up on this morning. So God, we thank you for the activity of our limbs. God, we thank you that our minds are stayed on you. We thank you even now, God. God, oh God, oh God, even if we have pain, we're here. So God, I say thank you, God, for purpose and destiny being on our life. God, I thank you and I praise you, God. God, for this service, God. God, oh God, that it will touch hearts, God. It will change lives in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for the rhema word that will come forth. Oh God, with boldness, clarity, and accuracy in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, God. Oh God, the victory is in the room in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, God. Oh, God, that victory, ha, victory is here, God. God, we grab hold, ha, oh, God, to our victory, God. We grab hold to our purpose, God. We grab hold to our sins, assignments in the earth, in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you, Hamasa, do it in the name of Jesus, God. Touch each and every life, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Heal, set free, and deliver. Heal, set free, and deliver. And God, we will be so mindful to give your name the praise. We will be so mindful to give your name the glory. God, we thank you for this moment in time, God. We thank you for all that you're doing, all that you're going to do, God, and all that you have done. In the matchless name of Jesus, God, we thank you. <laughs> I put on the screen, God, I thank you. Put on the screen, God, I thank you. I thank you. God, I thank you. <laughs> With a grateful heart, God, I thank you. <laughs> With a grateful heart, God, I thank you. <laughs> I thank you. I thank you. It could have been the other way, but God, I say thank you. He never said, Tati Abasi. See, I don't know I said, but God, I say thank you. <laughs> With a grateful heart. <laughs> With a grateful heart, lift up your hands, on ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting arms, and the King of glory shall come in. God, we thank you for your glory. God, we thank you for your presence on this morning. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you. God, I thank you. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, welcome, 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 wherever you are, welcome. Uh, from Australia to California to Maine, God, uh, to uh, Japan, uh, welcome, welcome to the worship room. Uh, welcome. Uh, and we will have our praise and worship to come forth to take us higher in the service. God bless you. Wherever you are, she said Japan, Maine. It doesn't matter where you are in your living room, in your kitchen, flipping, flipping some eggs. I don't know what you're doing, but stand up and put your hands up and give God the glory today. We've come to give him praise, to honor him, to worship him, because he has done so much already. And we are grateful. Hallelujah. Whoa. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put 
me back together now every desire is now satisfied right here in your love oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing Lord, you've seen them all and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain, he's the God of the valley. Yeah. And there's not a place your mercy and your grace won't find me again. Say, oh, Lord, there's nothing hey, better than you. Lord, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing, yeah. Nothing is better than you. Hey, and we know it to be true. Yeah. You turn morning to dancing. Give beauty for ashes, and you turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. Let's sing that again. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes, and you turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. Nothing is better than you. Come on, somebody sing that right where you are. Say, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. we love you and we thank you God because there's nothing that's better than God there's nothing on this earth that's better than him hallelujah oh. so that's why we ought to give him all the praise the glory and the honor and make it personal between you and your father is what I do when I want to be close to you I lift my hands in praise oh, oh, oh praise is 
is who I am, and I will praise him while I can. I'll bless him at all times, and I vow to praise you through the good. Good morning and God bless you. I pray that that praise and worship blessed you as much as it blessed me. She could have went a little bit longer if we be honest with it. Hallelujah. Somebody say nothing shall stop my praise. Hallelujah. Where are my praises at? I know that this is a this is a ministry full of worshipers, but where are our praisers? Hallelujah. It's so interesting that she sing that song because yesterday in time of meditation, I was praying against everything that will try to come and to stop your praise in this season. Whatever you stop doing, oh my, I feel something in my spirit here. Don't stop praising her. Come on, put that on the screen. Nothing will be able to stop my praise, Pastor Trina. Nothing will be able to stop my praise, Prophetess Alicia. Nothing will be able to stop my praise, Sharita. Nothing will be able 
Come on here. Woo. Come on here. Did y'all come ready to have church this morning? I see y'all writing and typing. Come on here. Nothing. I dare somebody who, who can't type as fast like sometimes when I'm in service. I can't type as fast because I'm in worship. So I dare you if you're in that crew like me just to say nothing. Come on here. Nothing. I decree and declare, come on here, that you brought a praise. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that at the thought of a memory, at the thought of the goodness of God, he doesn't have to do nothing else, prophetess Patrice, at the thought of what he has done, at the thought of what he has brought you out of, at the thought of what he has protected you from, God have mercy. I miss y'all. Come on here. Nothing will stop my praise. Come on here. Nothing will bottle up my praise. I decree and declare that God is even dealing with things that try to tamper with your praise. Woo! Come on here. God, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the anointing, huh? We thank you. Where are my worshipers and praises at? I want you to put flames of fire wherever you are. I want to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship experience. I feel good in the atmosphere this morning. I am so grateful, hey, that nothing will stop the way that I praise God. Come on here. I know that we may do most of our service virtually, but some of you ought to grab you a chair and you ought to do you a praise break right in your living room. It matters most how you live at home anyway. And so God, we thank you, hey, for the anointing. We thank you for all that you're doing in our atmospheres, God, in our homes, God. Come on, in our cars, come on here, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, wherever you may be. You may be laying on the side of your bed with the phone to your face. I decree and declare, hey, that the anointing of God is saturating your atmosphere. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. We can ready to go right into our time of communion. And so wherever you are, I want you to grab your communion elements, whether that's a piece of, a piece of bread or, a, or a, some juice or whatever you have. We're going right into communion. God, we thank you. And, and, I, and I want you all to, to say something else in your atmosphere. Nothing, come on here, is better than you, God. That was the first song that she sung. Nothing is better than you, God. Nothing compares to you. I have an encouraging word for you this morning. Somebody just shouted again, nothing, come on here, nothing or no one, come on, no place, hey, no status, no amount of money, come on, no amount of influence, nothing, God, hey, is better than you, come on here. So God, we thank you for your anointing. We thank you, there is nothing that brings us peace like you. There is nothing that brings us joy like you. There is nothing that brings us happiness like you. There is nothing, God, hey, that can sit on the throne of our hearts like you. I could cry right here. Woo, God, have, if, if I wasn't a facilitator, I'd be somewhere laying on my face. I'm so grateful that God's presence, hey, is not restricted to certain places and certain environments. And, and, and listen at this, you all. We don't deserve his presence. Come on here. Woo. We don't really deserve his goodness. We don't really deserve all that God does for us as his act of love, his continuous way of showing us, hey, woo, that he loves us. He loves us, y'all. Huh? I, I could get lost right there. Come on here. I, I could get lost right there. Nothing is better than you, God. Huh? Nothing compares to your strength, God. Huh? No one can do it like you, God. God, we thank you. Woo. <laughs> That's it. Thank you yeah, for not restricting your presence. So, God, we thank you. If you have your communion elements, I simply want you to say ready. I want you to say ready. And while you're running to wherever you got to run to to get your elements, I want to thank you all for all the love that you all showed on my birthday. My God was I loved and my God was I blessed. Thank you, Worship Network Global. Thank you, Worship Room Partners. Thank you, members. Thank you, friends and families. Let me tell you something. Y'all showed out on my birthday, and I could not just post something on Facebook. I had to let y'all know that I'm so appreciative for how y'all loved on me on my birthday. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. Let's go into our time of communion. I had to say that. I couldn't let no the service go no further without telling y'all that. My, my, matter of fact, do me a favor. Do me a favor. I want y'all to invite maybe five, of pe five, five people to the broadcast. Just type their name in here. I promise you, there's a word this morning, and, and we're not going to be long. I can promise you that. 
because it's a prophetic word and when God moves prophetically he doesn't drag it out all right I want you to just type five people's name in the chat box let's bring some people in the room if you're on YouTube or the platform if you come over to Facebook and just invite a few people for us I'd be so appreciative God we thank you for your presence we thank you that this is a healing room. Woo! Come on, we thank you that God, even now, God, you're doing a miracle in someone's life. You're doing a miracle in someone's kidney. Come on here, you're drying up a stone. You're doing something miraculous, even in this moment. I see so many of you sharing and inviting, and I sure appreciate you for that. All right, let's do this. I want you, whatever you have, that piece of bread or that cracker, I want you to hold it up in the air right through here. And I want you, as you look at this piece of bread, to be reminded of his body. Somebody say, the body. The body that was wounded for your transgression. Come on here. Come on. It was bruised for your iniquity. Come on here. I want you to look at the bread. And as you look at the bread, I want you to be reminded of a body that went through so much sacrifice. Watch this. That we did not deserve. God, we are so grateful on this last Sunday in November for what you went through. The bruising, the gnashing, the whipping. Yeah, I, know, I know it may sound gruesome, but I'll tell you this. Our Savior did it all for us, and we are so grateful. We are grateful for the sacrifice because we don't deserve it. And the part after all these years that still brings tears to my eyes, watch this. He could have changed his mind, Shirley. Woo! <laughs> what if, Pastor Trina, what if he would have got up there? Hey, and he could have. <laughs> Prophet of Shemekah. <laughs> what if he would have got up there and said, I don't want to do this for them. Some of them won't even serve me. Woo! Some of them will deny me. Some of them will create their own God and worship that God. Oh, but I am so grateful for the body. What he went through for us. I want you with that thought of gratefulness and gratitude. That, that's a good one there. We are so grateful. Woo, come on here. With Pastor Erica, we are so grateful. Hey, and it is with that spirit of gratitude. Whatever you do, hey, don't lose your gratitude. Hey, as we close out this month. <laughs> come on here. Don't lose your gratitude. I want you to take, take ye this bread that represents the body. Take ye and eat at this time. God, we thank you for the suffering. Take that bread and thank him at the same time. That bread is symbolic of his body. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. And then I want you to lift up your juice. Come on here. Yeah, every day is Thanksgiving. That's it. That's it. I want you to lift up whatever you have that's symbolic of his juice, uh, of his blood rather. And I want you to say the blood. I want it, whatever platform you're on, I want you to say the blood. Come on here. Woo! It is through his blood that we have forgiveness, redemption, and redemption. Come on here. From all manner of sickness and disease. And I heard the Lord tell me to tell you this, and we're going to drink, this, drink, drink our communion this morning. I want you to know that as you drink the blood, whoo, God have mercy. Bless you, Mama Tina, love you. As you drink the blood, hey, as you take part in this Holy Communion, Holy Spirit told me to tell you that the curse is reversed. Whoo, I want you to write that. I could lose it right clean, right in my office. Somebody say, the curse is reversed. As you drink the blood, I hear the Lord telling me to tell y'all this. As you drink the blood, whoo, sickness is reversed. The curse is reversed. Come on here. Come on here. It is reversed. As you drink the blood, ooh, I want you to drink it. Yeah. And then I want you to write, the curse is reversed. Come on. It will not work. Woo, come on here. It will not work. God have mercy. It is reversed. Woo. And I heard a preacher say the other year that 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 what was meant for you, it'll have a boomerang effect. God have mercy. Ah, yonder lo ho. Come on. The curse is reversed. Come on here. Drink ye at this time. Father, we thank you for the blood. Jeremiah and Jordan, the curse is reversed. Sharita, the curse is reversed. I decree and declare, as you have taken part of the drinking of the blood, it cannot happen. Woo! I dare somebody to write that on their screen. Y'all, I feel good in here this morning. It feels like the worship room. And if I could change the name of it, it sounds like, it feels like the miracle room. Woo!
So God, we thank you this morning. Nemo, I love you. Love you and daddy. We thank you, God, that every curse, that's it, Miss Frazier. Come on, that's it, Prophet is Joyce. Come on here. We got a moment to linger right here because what some of you have to realize, when you take part in Holy Communion, you are taking part in a time of the miraculous. You are taking part in a time that is meant to heal you. It can not happen. I know the enemy is crouched at the door. I know some of you, you went through something over the Thanksgiving holidays and you say, God, I know, I know this is not how November is going to end. I dare you just to say, there is time for it to be reversed. God, we thank you. We're gonna move. Oh, but I feel his presence right through here. <laughs> I feel his power. God, we thank you this morning. And we thank you for every opportunity that we have to take part in Holy Communion. Somebody say wherever you are in the world, and it is so. Come on, just lift that. And it is so. Come on. And it is so. Just throw that. And it is so. I feel the God that reverses curses in this atmosphere. I, I, I sense the God, come on here, that goes through down our bloodline, come on here, Woo! and ties a knot where, where other times it would have came on through your bloodline, but I see Holy Spirit in the Spirit tying a knot so that it stops with you. It won't touch your children, come on here. It won't jump off of you onto your spouse. It won't touch your family members. God, we thank you that as we have taken part in Holy Communion this morning, the curse was reversed. It cannot happen, and it is so. In Jesus' name. Somebody right on the screen, it's giving time. God, we thank you. I'm just sensing the atmosphere. Bless you on YouTube. Bless you on our website portal. And my God, bless you all on Facebook. I am so, so grateful for so many of you being connected to the worship room. And I must say this, you all are a tremendous group of givers. And I just wanted to say that I decree, woo, come on, somebody say, I am a tither. Holy Spirit told me, don't read the confession today. He said, decree and declare some things over the tithers. I decree and declare for every tither of the worship room that you shall not lack anything. Watch this going into 2022. I decree and declare, come on here, that your barns will run over. I decree and declare that promotion will find you. I decree and declare, come on here, that new clients will find you and those clients will bring new clients. I don't know who that's for, but I see new clients. God have mercy. Come on here. I see new clients and I see clients clients bringing clients to you. I decree and declare for the tither, you're getting ready to experience the blessings of God in the name of Jesus. So I want every tither, I want you to run and I want you to think about this. What if tithing is only an opportunity for you to step into the next level? Woo, God have mercy. <laughs> what if tithing is only the opportunity and only the way for you to step into the next place. Somebody say the next place. I decree and declare that as you tithe this morning, that sickness will fall off of your life. I decree and declare, watch this, that as you tithe this morning, hey, that something supernatural will happen, come on here, with your credit score. I decree and declare, hey, that as you tithe this morning, that something special will find its way into your life as you tithe this morning. You are positioning yourself to be richer than you were this morning, and it's still morning time, by the way. I decree and declare that as you tithe, come on here, wealth and riches will be att attracted to your life. And I decree and declare, come on here, that no weapon formed against you or your your finances shall be able to prosper. I want you to say this on the screen. I'll never be broke another day in my life. Come on, we're going to move. Come on. I want you to throw that. I'll never be broke Woo! another day in my life. As you're tithing and as you're saying that, I want you to go. There are four ways for you to tithe this morning. 
Woo! I feel something for the tithers this morning. <laughs> I decree and declare that because you are a tither, hey, you cannot run out. God have mercy. Because you are a tither, come on here, you haven't seen your best days yet. God have mercy. Because you are a tither, your relationships are going to work out. Good God from Zion. Woo! Because you are a tither, somebody's going to find you and give you a blank check. What is a blank check? I'm so glad you're wondering. A blank check is a check that somebody brings you and they tells you they tell you you write out the amount that you need I decree and declare for every tither this is just our time of tithing here it is Tanya that God is getting ready to open up the windows of heaven and bless you in such a way that you'll barely have enough room to receive on this level what he's getting ready to do for you I'm gonna give every tither 60 seconds to put your tithe in the ground and then we're going right into the word of the Lord. I feel something special for the tithers though. Woo! Those who tithe. And in our ministry, we literally are at about 95% tithing. I'd, somebody better grab that blank check. Woo! You, you better grab. They're going to come up to you and ask you, how much do you need, woman of God? I love what you're doing. How much do you need, man of God? We've been watching you. How much do you need, ministry leader? We've been watching you, and we've been so blessed by your ministry. You have 30 seconds. Run and put your tithe in the ground. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week. I want you to run and put your tithe in the ground. After your tithe, I, if this your week to tithe, I simply want you to say done. Some of you, you may tithe from your business stuff. I, I, I just sent something in here. If, if you was any kind of tither, I dare you to make sure you put your tithe in the ground. I'm going to give you 20 seconds, and then we're going right into the word of the Lord. May every tither be blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I touch and agree with every tither. Woo! And I decree and declare that with this tithe, may it make you eligible to step into a new place of wealth. Wealthy people don't struggle with tithing. Good God. Wealthy people don't struggle with tithing. God have mercy. We thank you, Father. And we count it so. We count it done. 10 seconds and we're moving. I got a word for you this morning. God, we thank you. Bless them as the tithing from wherever they are in the world, God. Bless these tithers, God. Five seconds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good God, I feel his presence. If you feel the presence of God as they're tithing, I want you just to simply put flames of fire on the screen. I got a word for you this morning, and it's not going to take me long to give it to you, but it's going to bless you real good. Hallelujah. Just throw those flames of fire on the screen wherever you are, YouTube, the portal. I'm giving the tithers a little time. Thank you, God. We bless you, Father. We honor you, God. We honor you, God. Woo! We honor you, God. Good God, I feel something in here. Somebody throw this in the atmosphere. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Good God. Woo! I feel something. Somebody throw this in the atmosphere. Miracles, signs, and wonders. What some of you don't know is your tithe just made you a target for a miracle. I see you, Teresa. God bless you. I see you, Miss Janice. I want to say that if we're going to move, your tithe. Ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause it. I want you to. I want you to hear this. I heard the Holy Spirit say, "He said, tell them that that, that your tithe. Sometimes, somebody just say sometimes, it will make you a target for a miracle. There are some things some of you been believing God for." And I guarantee you, when you logged on here this morning, I guarantee you, and for some of you, you may have already tithed. Regardless if you've tithed this week or you've tithed today, you didn't know that when you woke up, 
that it was your tithe. God, somebody say my tithe and I'm moving that would seal the deal for my miracle. God have mercy. And for our ministry, because of your generosity, because of your heart to give, come on here. This is all of you. Come on here. Your, your tithe was the last piece of the puzzle that God was waiting for to turn it all around. I, th this, Pastor Erica, this right here is making me want to change my message. God have mercy. Woo! Somebody say, it's getting ready to turn around. I don't know who I'm sitting in front of. I'm going to give you what God has given me. But here's the first prophetic word. Can I flow prophetically this morning? It's getting ready to turn around. So here it is, Prophet Shamika. So don't get used to how it looks. God have mercy. Don't get used to how it feels. Oh my. Don't get used to that level because God told me to tell you that it is impossible for you as a tither. This is for the tither still. For me to take you into a new year and you stay at the same place. All right. Come on, let's go into the word. I feel preaching power on me now. Come on, let's go to the word. I want you to look in your Bibles at the book of Jonah. And, and I'm going to tell you something. There are so many different scriptures that God is speaking a new word through. That's the thing about the word. The word of God is timeless. Somebody say that. You call that prophetess Alicia? Come on here. Somebody say the word. Write this in your notes. The word of God is timeless. It'll work for you in other words in every season of your life. Woo, I see a woman crying her eyes out right now. Woo, I see a woman crying her eyes out. And then I see a man just kind of rock, rocking back and forth on the edge of the bed. I sense God doing something in this atmosphere, but, but I got to move in this word. Let's go to Jonah. And we're going to start at chapter one. And we're going to read from the message translation. All right, we're going to read from the message translation. Jonah 1 and 2. One day long ago, God's word came to Jonah. Watch this. And this is what was said. You feel that, Pastor Trina? It's something in this room moving. Up on your feet and on your way to the big city of Nineveh. Preach to them. Watch this. They are in a bad way and I can't ignore it any longer. Now, anyone who knows Bible you'll understand that Nineveh was an enemy to the children of Israel, all right? So then verse three of chapter of Jonah one, but Jonah got up, watch this, and went in the other direction. Here's what I want you to understand. So let me just narrate, because I feel like by the time I end this, we'll be done, watch this. So, jo so God gave Jonah an instruction to go minister and to preach to his former enemy. Somebody say his former enemy. Here's the first prophetic word I want you to understand. There are getting ready to be some assignments and there are getting ready to be some instructions that God will give you, watch this, concerning who your enemy is. Woo! You must understand that because they are your enemy, they are not God's enemy. I'm going to leave that alone. And so God tells Jonah, he says, go to them and preach. They're in a, they're in a bad way. And then it says, I cannot ignore them any longer. I'm trying to move, but watch this. They're going against God. They are rebelling against God. They erected false gods against the only true in God, but he still has mercy for Nineveh. <laughs> Come on here. If you catch this, you'll understand the next season that God's getting ready to bring you into. All right. Now let's watch the behavior of Jonah, because whether you know it or not, some of you are Jonah in this season. You have no clue why God is telling you to do what it is that your blessing is attached to. What if I were to just jump ahead and tell you this one point? Your blessing is attached to a, an assignment that you don't even agree with. Woo! <laughs> this is my life, y'all. Woo! <laughs> Your next level, Pastor Erica, <laughs> is attached to a group of people, come on here, that create group chats about you. I'll bring it right into our dispensation because we may not understand it when we tell it in Jonah terms. 
your next breakthrough is attached and assigned to a group of people that don't care nothing for you, <laughs> nor your God. What if your next assignment, I'm going to read this verse 3, is assigned to a group of people you have to preach to that do not even believe, come on here, that Jesus is the only way to God. All right. And so Jonah, due to what he didn't understand, be careful of what you don't understand in this season. When God tells you to do a thing, make sure that your obedience overrides the things that you don't understand. God told me while I was getting ready for this morning, he says, tell them this is going to be a season, hey, of extreme obedience. Come on, this is going to be a season of, of where God will tell you to do a thing and it will make no sense, but God will be all in the details of the things you don't agree with. And so Jonah, it says, but Jonah got up after hearing God. Woo! And he went in the other direction, running away from God. Woo! Somebody say, and I shall not run. We talked the other week about how gifted you are and how you cannot run from the prophetic. Woo! And how you cannot run from how apostolic you are. And here's the interesting thing about running. Some of you are running from the very gifts, abilities, places, talents, and people that have your prosperity locked. Are you running from the thing that could help you? Woo! Are you trying to hide the gift that will take you into high six figures? Are you trying to hide the ministry that thousands will seek you out to receive the benefits from? Be careful what you run from. Woo! I feel an anointing. Hey, come on here. He's dealing with the runner this morning. He's dealing with the person who hides the gift. The person like how I was, Pastor Trina who didn't want nobody calling me prophetic. I didn't want nobody calling me apostolic. And when I got tired of running, cause you will, you can be pure and still run. You can have good intents and be like Jonah. And so it says, but Jonah got up and went in the other direction, running away from God. He went down to the port of Joppa and found a ship headed in the opposite direction of the direction that God wanted him to go in. Watch this. He paid the fare and went on board, joining those going to Tarshish. But then watch this. As far away from God as he can get. Can I just drop this in the atmosphere? Be careful of people who will receive your money, your time, and your attention so that they can help you disobey God. I want y'all to hear this. Be careful of people who come into agreement while you are on your journey of running. Eee! All right, I, th this is messing with some of you. Be careful of people who come in partnership with you. Watch this. They didn't even believe in God, but they partnered with Jonah to help him disobey God. Woo, woe unto those who help you stay behind. Hey, woo, woe unto those, God have mercy, y'all better hear me this morning, who help you hide the gift that God has put on the inside of you. Woe unto those who help you understand why God doesn't want to use you allegedly. Somebody say, just be careful. That's it, prophet of Shemekah. Somebody just say, be careful. Now watch this. Then we go to verses four through six, and we're reading from the message translation. But God sent a huge storm at sea. Somebody that, that, that knows God and has history with God ought to say, you cannot run from God. Woo! So he sent a storm with big waves towering the ship. And the ship was about to break into pieces. As I was studying this, the Lord began to tell me that some of you have been in a season where it feels like things are, 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 are almost like, it's like things are trying to break apart. God told me to tell you, Things are not going to break into pieces. Yeah. Come on here. I don't know who that's for, but it's not going to fall apart. Your life is not going to be a bunch of pieces that, that, that you got. And this is how I hear it. You, you've come this far by faith. Now God's not going to let it all fall into pieces. Yeah. God, who is that for? It's not going to fall apart. You're not going to get behind. Come on here. He loves you too much for that to happen. All right. Now watch this. 
the sailors who were on this ship because of Jonah's uh, disobedient behind, they were terrified. I want y'all to watch this. They called out in desperation, here it is, to their gods. They didn't believe in the only true living God. But watch this. They threw everything they were carrying overboard to lighten the ship. Now, now watch this. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down, gone down into the hold of the ship to take a nap. How in the ham and cheese is he on this ship? There's a storm because he's on it and he's down there taking a nap. Watch this. He was sound asleep. The captain came to him and he said, get your behind up. He didn't say that. He came to him and he said, what's this? How do you sleep? Get up. Watch this. Pray to your God. Maybe your God will see we're in trouble and rescue us. Can, can, can I just say this? Every time you disobey God, other people suffer. If you look at the beginning of this particular passage, you will see due to what Jonah didn't agree with, due to the thing, watch this, that frustrated. Woo, somebody just say, I'm frustrated. <laughs> God have mercy. Just somebody say, I'm, even if you're not, I just want to see that go down the screen because some of you are frustrated and don't even know you're frustrated. Some of you, come on here, are going through situations and circumstances and all you can say is, God, this is not what you promised me. <laughs> this is not what November should look like for me. This is a month of harvest. How did I end up with rotten bananas? <laughs> Somebody say, I'm frustrated. The title of my message this morning is Hidden Frustration. <laughs> so, and this is my conclusion of this series. Oftentimes, the enemy will do things in your life, watch this, to simply frustrate you. Woo, I want y'all to see this. Now watch this. Verse 12 says this, and y'all know this, this story, but I gotta read it. Let's jump down to Jonah 1 and 12. Cause my assignment this morning is to help you identify the frustration, watch this, that has been hidden in this season of your life. And if we all be honest and transparent, there is a level of frustration that comes in our life in different times and different variations. Sometimes it's dressed up, God have mercy. Sometimes we cause the frustration. And then other times, here it is, we don't even know how frustrated we are. But God told me to tell you, as he be my, my own witness, he told me yesterday when he gave me this word, he says, tell them, I'm dealing with the hidden frustrations. <laughs> now watch this, Jonah 1 and 12. It says, Jonah said, throw me overboard into the sea. Then the storm will stop. It's my fault. Woo! I, I, I dare somebody to simply say, it's all my fault. God have mercy. I, I told you that you were gonna be Jonah for a moment. Come on here. Yeah, dressed up frustration. <laughs> Come on here. I want you to, to, to say it's, it's all my fault. There is something God told me to do. And, and let's be honest, we didn't do it. And so as a consequence of disobedience, as a consequence, and I gotta talk through this, of us having to understand that we thought, frustration came in our life. And one of the most dangerous things, watch this children of Israel, one of the most dangerous things about frustration is it will cause you to murmur. Woo! <laughs> I hear you, Holy Spirit. Frustration will cause you to complain. But the most tragic thing about the spirit of frustration, it wipes out your memory of the history of God. <clears throat> Somebody say, and I shall not murmur. Have you found yourself murmuring in this season because of the frustration that was brought upon your life Maybe you made a left when God told you to make a left, but you was murmuring too much to hear him say, now make a right and make a quick left turn. Woo! Frust the frustration, this is what God told me. The frustration that many of you are dealing with is a consequence of something like Jonah said that we did wrong. 
Here's the beautiful thing about this. If I did something wrong, Kadisha, what I love about this type of frustration that God is showing us, I'm in control of the frustration ending in my life. I come this morning, not for those who are so happy that this message is not even for them, but I come for those who have a level of frustration in their life. Woo! This morning, I come for those who have found themselves in a season that doesn't remind them of God, whether it be in your career, woo! whether it be in your health, come on here, whether it be in your finances. Here it is, and I don't mean to say this harshly. All of us have a frustrated area of our life. But here's the thing, Janice. We just know how to dress it up. Hey, we know how to turn to the side. And some of us are so frustrated at times, we know our good side. We know the not so good side. And we know how to make ourselves look good so nobody even can discern that we're frustrated. Yee. The dangerous thing about being frustrated with your makeup on, yee, come on here, with your suit on, in your luxury car, in your house you built from the ground up, it, it, wherever you are in that fancy career, the, 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 the dangerous thing about being frustrated naturally is that it'll frustrate your gifts spiritually. Woo! Somebody say this, and if we all say it, nobody will know who it really is. Somebody say, God, deal with the frustrations of my life. I know that's long, but write it, write it, write it, write it. God is dealing with the frustrated parts of your mind. Huh? He's dealing with the things that try to frustrate you naturally to stop you spiritually. He's dealing, he can, he comes this morning for the frustrated. All right, here it is. Jonah 1 and 12, and I feel an anointing right here. <laughs> Jonah said, throw me overboard into the sea then the storm will stop now watch this it's all my fault he says i'm the cause of the storm get rid of me and you'll get rid of the storm god have mercy did y'all hear that get rid of me come on get rid of the disobedience come on here get rid of the stubbornness come on here get rid of us doing it a particular way and you will get rid of the storm here's a here's a note for you when you get rid of the thing that calls you to derail, woo, choices and decisions, huh? You also get rid of the storm. Frustration causes unnecessary storms to come in your life. Woo! Come on here. This all started, watch this, believe it or not, because Jonah didn't feel like God. Who did Jonah think he was? Jonah, watch this, Mama Tina. Jonah didn't feel like Nineveh deserved the mercies of God. And so when God told Jonah to go and preach to them, he called an attitude. And one of the definitions of frustration is to get angry. Watch this. Be careful how you feel about the assignments that God places upon your life. Woo! Oftentimes, it has nothing to do with you. All right, here it is. Jonah 1 and 15. This story spoke to me. I pray that it's blessing you too. Jonah 1 and 15. They took Jonah, the men of that ship, <laughs> they took Jonah and they threw him overboard. Watch this. Immediately. I want everybody on every platform to say immediately. Immediately, the sea was quieted down. When you are quickly or immediately, bless you, Miss Cunningham, when you are immediately obedient to God, watch this. The storms that you are going through were quiet. I I'm going to say this because some of y'all, I know if you're like me, you don't always like this part of the assignment, but God told me to tell you that it's about to get quiet. Woo! Nobody might call you for a season. It's about to get quiet in some of your life. And, and you know why? Because sometimes it's just too much noise. It's too many phone calls. It's too many things going on. 
And I had a very interesting dream last night. And I'm going to tell you, I wasn't going to share it because it was just so out there. I said, okay, God. But I had a dream. And in this dream, I was getting ready to preach. And before I preach, and this is not even like me, I put some what looked to be chewing gum. Somebody say chewing gum. Just write that on the screen, chewing gum. I want to share this because I feel this is an appropriate moment to share this with you. I went to, and, I'm, and I'm closing here. I went to, went to preach. I had a preaching assignment. And I went to put this gum on my mouth and I was just chewing the gum, chewing the gum. And then as I got ready to speak, I went to take, take the gum out of my mouth and the gum just got bigger and it kept growing and growing and growing. And I was standing before a group of people. This is prophetic. And God gave me the revelation of what this dream actually meant. As I was standing before the people, I was trying to take the gum out of my mouth in front of the people. And the more I tried to pull the gum out, the bigger it got. And then when I finally got the gum out of my mouth, I realized that my mouth was infected and my tongue was big. I woke up, literally. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, tell the people of God, watch this, to be careful what they put in their mouth. Woo! I said, God, what are you saying? Tell me real plain. He says, tell them it matters what they are eating in this season. Woo! Some of us are putting things in our mouth and in our mind and in our system that infect us. It slows us down. Come on here. In the tongue of, of my mouth, I couldn't even talk no more. God says if you put the wrong thing in your mouth sometimes, it will swell up, you, it will swell up your tongue and it will stop your ability to speak. The enemy doesn't want you to speak in this season. Woo, who am I talking to? Say that. Be careful what you put in your mouth. Be careful who you are listening to in this season. Be careful what you include in your appetite. It might look like gum, but it's poison. Woo! It may look like something, come on here, that you may like. It may be dressed up to your favorite liking. But Holy Spirit told me to tell you all prophetically this morning, be careful what you put in your mouth. Be careful what you are eating. Be careful who you let feed you. We've just come off of Thanksgivings. And some of you, I pray this is not you, you ate it, you ate somewhere, and something that you ate, it made you sick. This is how we are sometimes. Be careful what you put in your mouth. The enemy, as I'm closing, has been trying to frustrate some of you. If you feel like you can be honest and transparent, just simply say, that was me. Frustration through your relationships. Frustration in the ministry. Frustration in your career. God, I'm supposed to be further than this. Eh. Come on here. God told me to tell you he's dealing with hidden frustration. And when you read that story of Jonah, as soon, watch this, as soon as he threw himself overboard, we understand there was a big well that God prepared him for that season of disobedience to swallow him up only to give him another chance to get it right. Isn't it something, Prophetess Alicia, you love the word, watch this, that even when you're disobedient, God will prepare a safe place Come on, he has a well for you. Woo, God have mercy. He has a fish that has been, paired, has been prepared to swallow you up, but not to kill you. Woo, God, in your place of obedience, the mercies of God it will reach down. Hey, to, to, the, the mercy of God will reach down to rescue you because he knows you're going to get it wrong. And so watch this. Jonah was in this, this well. And I saw this as I was studying this passage. Jonah was in this well's belly for three days. When the well spit him up, because he still had to do his assignment. You caught that condition? Somebody say, God, I thank you for my well. Woo! I thank you for the thing you, you've prepared for me, because I am going to get it wrong. Woo! Come on here. This is not for the religious people, because I might be disobedient. I may respond to something that I thought God said, but he didn't say it. Woo! God have mercy. God, I thank you, hey, for the well that you prepared for me because I might get it wrong. Ah, God, I thank you for my well. I thank you for the fish that will swallow me for three days 
but will not crush me, eh, that will not kill me. And if you really understand some of these animals, there are acids in these fish that should kill a human being. But, but come on, jo Jonah was preserved. And here's what's so interesting. While he was in this well for three days and the well spit him up, he still had to obey God and do his assignment. But here's what's so amazing. He was in the well's belly for three days. And then when the well spit him up, watch this. He had three days to complete his assignment because it took him three days to get to Nineveh. Here's what I'm trying to say. When we found ourselves frustrated, getting out of that frustration sometimes can take you, not God, it can take you the same amount of time to get out of it that it got you in it. Somebody say three days. I prophesy and I'm done. I prophesy that over the next three, how many hours is that? I feel a grace on that. Woo! Over And, and I, I never caught this. All the years I read this story, I never caught that it took him three days to get to Nineveh which was the same, watch this Pastor Eric, because you love the word too. That was the same amount of time that he was in a place that held him captive until he got his yes together. Yeah. It's going to take three days for some of you, for everything to get, get it, to get, to really get you together because you need a new yes. Three days, 72 hours. This is what I wrote for you. You are going to pass the test of frustration. Woo! If you're not frustrated now, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but frustration, it has an appointment with some area of your life. Somebody say, I shall pass this test. That's, what, that's my word this morning. You shall pass the test of frustration. Feel like you are alone by yourself. Feel like you will not get married. The devil is a liar. Come on. I hear wedding bells. I'm going to leave it alone. You will pass the test of frustration. Frustrations with your finances. You shall pass it. I'm closing. Frustration within your relationships. You will pass the test. God have mercy. Frustration with your ministry not growing like God showed you. You shall pass the test. Business being slow. New clients need to arrive. You will pass the test of frustration. And then I wrote this one. I said, God, you're so right. Frustration within our government. We shall pass this test. Woo! Frustration in the White House. Frustration in the schoolhouse. Because you have to understand, this place of frustration is bigger than you and I's life. God told me to tell you he's going to deal with the frustration in neighborhoods, in states like Chicago, in states like Tennessee, where they feel like killing one another is the only way to deal with the disagreement, hidden frustration. God told me to tell you this morning that he's getting ready to deal with frustration that you may not even know that it's there. Frustration in your children's school system. Woo! Frustration in medicine, where the medicine don't even do what it's supposed to do. God says, I am the God woo, of hidden frustration. Somebody write that. I feel an anointing right here. Woo. And I decree and declare, hey, he is the God of the frustration. He deals with the frustration so that you don't begin to murmur. And here's the thing about frustration. It will cause you to see things from the wrong perspective. It even, frustration will cause you to see stuff, here it is, that's not even there. Woo, God have mercy. Frustration will cause you to hear stuff that people are not even saying. And then frustration will cause you to miss what's really being said. This is common in marriage. Woo, you so frustrated, you don't even hear them saying, I love you and I need you. You're so frustrated. Come on here with your children. You don't even see that your children are going through in school because of what they're going through. They're being bullied. God, I don't know who that's for, but your child is not a bad child. Something is going on to the schoolhouse. He is the God Woo! that deals with every level of our frustration. Some of you have grown kids and you take personal what they're doing. Don't take it personal. They're frustrated. 
God is about to use many of you to help other people get free from levels of frustration. You're frustrated. They're frustrated. Now your life is frustrated. Your health is frustrated. But I decree and declare there is an anointing. Somebody just say, I receive it. Woo! For God to deal with the frustrated areas of your life. I want you to put hashtag 72 hours. I'm done. I'm done. Woo! I'm done. In this season, frustration, it will not overtake you. God literally told me, as God is my witness, published me, he said, tell them this morning, I see their frustration. And, I, and, and then he said, I, I, hear, I hear your silent tears. Woo! I, I, I hear your silent tears. I'm going to say that. I want you to hear that. God says, I, 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 I hear your silent tears. I see you crying and nobody don't even know you crying. Woo! God says, I'm dealing with frustration in you all's life. And I hear God. And, and, and one thing I don't do, I don't play with the prophetic. And if he's not talking, I'm not talking. Evangelist Kim, if, if he ain't talking, woo, I have nothing to say. I don't preach if the anointing is not on me to preach. And I don't say what I don't hear him saying. God told me, woo, just like I gave Jonah three days. Write that on the screen. I know it's 72 hours, but I want you to say three days. He said, I have a well. Woo, he said, tell them. I have a well, hey, that I have prepared for them to swallow them up and to protect them so that the enemy doesn't get to them in their place of disobedience, in their place of just not knowing. Sometimes we miss what God is saying and become frustrated because we, we just didn't even know. We didn't know that he didn't want us to do it. We thought, what do you do when you find yourself frustrated and you thought God said it? Woo! God says, tell them just like I did Jonah. I'm going to turn it around in three days. <laughs> God says, tell them, what's three days from now? Y'all put it, whatever three days is from now, I want you to put it. That's Wednesday. By Wednesday, I decree and declare, just like we started. <laughs> I didn't know how God was going to put this together. Come on here. By Wednesday, it's going to all look different. So some of you, maybe tonight, maybe Monday morning, the first thing, the well might swallow you up. But by Wednesday, eh, somebody throw that in the atmosphere. God have mercy. December the 1st, you can't make this stuff up. It's Wednesday, December the 1st. Good God from Zion. Woo! <laughs> wow. By the first day of December, ah, God, I thank you for the prophetic. <laughs> I'm out there, y'all. There's no way you can make this stuff up. By, somebody say, by December the 1st, it's going to all look different. Woo! I feel the prophetic in here. By December the 1st, by Wednesday, the well's going to spit you out. <laughs> and you'll be able, but by Wednesday. Woo, that's, oh, God have mercy. I'm done. I'm closing. I've gone over my time. But by Wednesday, I could take off running. <laughs> God, but by Wednesday, hey, this frustration is going to break. But by Wednesday, you will have re received a strategy Come on here from God so that things look different. Somebody say it's sowing time. It's only appropriate to sow right through here. I want you to grab as close as you have to $72. I didn't plan it. I promise y'all I didn't plan this. I want you to sow as close as you have to $72. If you know this word is for you, I'm not talking to those who sat back and just said, no, good, good Sunday message, good little lesson. Now I'll go and do my whatever. No, no. I'm talking to those of you. This message grabbed your stomach and twisted it. That's who I'm talking to this morning. I want you to sow $72 or as close. If $5 is close as you, whatever that amount, if $10 is close, but get you a seed in the ground. Because I believe, Prophet is Joyce, woo, by Wednesday, December the 1st, something's going to break. Something is going to break. Woo! Something is going to look different. Something's turning around, Pastor Erica. <laughs> God have mercy. Whoever this is for, I don't know who it's for. He didn't tell me 10, 20, 30 people. Whoever this is for, I wouldn't miss it. 
I decree and declare that as you partner with the heavens, yeah, that the heavens will partner with you. I decree and declare for every person in the cash out with dollar sign worship room church. I know many like to sow that way, so put your seed in the ground. Or you could do the PayPal me is there as well. I want you to go partner. Because by Wednesday, something's gonna look different. Woo! By Wednesday, and after you sow, I want you to put done. I just want to touch and agree. Eee! I want it to go down as a record in the earth that you, there are some people in the worship room that still believe God. Woo! Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That still know God to be a God that prepares a well for the seasons of our life that we don't get it right. What kind of God is this? Yeah. Miss Cunningham, I touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. I'm going to give you all 60 seconds to partner with this word. Woo! This is one for the books, y'all. I wouldn't miss it if I were you. Providence Legion, Lord, I touch and agree with you in Jesus' name. Woo! Tonya, I touch and agree with you. Ebe Shandoloho in Jesus' name. I feel the anointing. Y'all excuse me. Woo! I feel glory. Ha <laughs> ha! Prophetess Joyce, I touch and agree with you. Hey, in Jesus' name. Ha! God, we thank you that by December 1st, he loves us so much. He's going to break it off of us, Prophetess Shamika. Watch this. Before the New Year's Eve service. So some of you are going to come to the New Year's Eve service, whether it's ours or another service, and you're going to be so free that you're going to dance and tear up everything because that'll be your opportunity to celebrate because 2021 will ha would have released all that you need God to do in your life. I need everybody upon the sound of my voice to simply say, and it shall be. Woo! God have mercy. Simply say, and it shall be. I decree and declare for who this word may not be for everybody, but some people you're like, nope, that's not for me. But for those who this word was for, I decree and declare that you're coming out of that place of frustration. Happiness is about to find you. Joy is about to find you. Peace is about to find you. And for a few of you, you're about to laugh again. Frustration will take your joy. Some of you can't sleep. One of the signs of frustration is you cannot sleep. Another one of the signs of frustration is you have irregular eating patterns. Woo! Another sign of frustration is you get mad real quick. And another sign of frustration is you quit when you should keep going. You quit and you leave easily. No more frustration. Jump back in there. Woo! Jump back in there. Pick up the mantle and continue to do what it is God has for you. Well, my time is up. I could go on and on, but I'm going to let you go. I feel like God has done his assignment on this Sunday morning. I want you to make sure you join. No more frustration. Everybody write that. No more God's going to give you strategy for the frustration. I pray that every one of you put a seed in the ground. Even if you don't have the 72, put it. Now is offering time. And you don't want to come before the Lord empty handed if you can stand it. I want everyone. We had a time of tithing. Now it's time for offering. Put your seed in the ground. Whatever seed amount you have. I feel led to put the ways to sow. Make sure every one of you that you sow. That you put your seed in the ground. This is offering time. In Jesus' name. I'm going to give you 30 seconds and we're done. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. God, we bless your name. We honor you, Father. We honor you, Father. We install your name. We install your name. We install your name. We install your name in Jesus' name. All right, four quick announcements that we're done. Bless you, yeah. I thank God for every sower, and there may be some of you who wanted to sow, but you didn't have it to sow. May God bless you as well in Jesus' name. Somebody put December 4th on the screen. Next Saturday at 7.30 Saturday, we're having our prayer and healing service. And, and this service, the Lord told me, he said, there are some things that I'm going to heal them from 
so they don't have to bring it into, watch this, the new year. So I want you to make sure that if you are in the DMV area or if you want to fly in, take a train in, drive in, meet us December the 4th, which is Saturday at 7.30 for our prayer and healing service, all right? Secondarily, on New Year's Eve service, we are having an in-person service for New Year's Eve service, so you don't want to miss this service, all right? For New Year's, we believe there's a certain seed amount that we put in the ground. And so if you're on my email list or you don't know the seed amounts, simply email us at info at marcusrivers.org and we will put in the seed amounts that the Lord has placed on our hearts as a ministry so that when we are at our New Year's Eve service, you put the correct seed amount in the ground in Jesus' name, all right? For the month of December, there will be no Thursday midweek service, all right? Put that on the screen. No Thursday midweek services for the month of December, all right? And then last but not least, new members class is going to be today at 6 30 all right new member class is today at 6 30 all right if you want to be a member of this amazing church we have new members class today but we need you to call our 866 number and let us know that you're going to join this church you've dated us you've watched us and you say you know what this is my church home I want you to become a member of this amazing, amazing, growing, thriving, safe church, all right? So if you find yourself wanting to be a member, you also can go to marcusrivers.org and click on Join Online Church, and you can join our church that way. If you need prayer, this word, it was a tough one, but it was a good one. And we hit so many different areas of one's life. If you need someone to pray with you, our ministry center is open right now, and we have ministry leaders that are more than capable to pray with you. Last but not least, but most importantly, if you want to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to live this saved life, we want you to call the ministry line. <coughs> Excuse me. We have ministry leaders that are waiting for your phone call so they can walk you through the next steps of what you do as a born again believer, all right? I love you all, God bless you all. I pray that today blessed you and blessed me to worship with you this morning, all right? I love you all. Make sure if you're already enrolled for, for Inner Circle, tomorrow night is our last um, class of Inner Circle for this month and we're jumping right into December. So there's so many things going on. So December the 4th is our prayer and he he healing service. Then we have New Year's Eve service. Then there's no uh, Thursday midweek service for December. And new members class is today at 6.30, all right? I love you all. God bless you as we leave this place, but never your presence. God, we thank you that you are the God of our frustration. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you again real soon right here in the worship room.